नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया निगम कल्पातरोगलित फल सुखमृत दिवस मुद विविध भक्तमरासमल मुहुरोहराशिगो विभावक नारायण नमस्कृत नारम चायवरनोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नाश्रवेशु निगवद सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवी नाइस्ति के एते चंसा कला पुंस कृष्णस्तु भगवान् स्वयं इंद्रियाकल लोक मृदे युगे युगे नाम संकर्तन यशापनाशन प्रणाम दुख समनस्त नमा हरि परम सो वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम द श्रीमद भगवता एट कैंथो सिक्स चैप्टर टेक्स नंबर थर्टी नाइन The chapter is entitled "The Demigods and Demons Declare a Truce." Avaro pyagirim skandat, supana patatam vara, yaya jalanta utsrija, hari na sa visajita, avaro pya. unloading girim the mountain skandhat from his shoulder suparna garuda patatam of all the birds varam the biggest or most powerful yayao <coughs> went Jala ante, where the water is, utrija, placing, Harina, by the supreme personality of Godhead, sa, he, Garuda, visajita, discharged from that place. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Sila A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Sila Prabhupada. Sila Prabhupada ki. Translation. Thereafter, Garuda, the chief of birds, unloaded Mandara Mountain from his shoulder and brought it near the water. Then he was asked by the Lord to leave that place, and he left. <coughs> purport. Karur was asked by the Lord to leave that place because the snake Vasuki, who was to be used as a rope of, for churning, could not go there in the presence of Garur. Garur, the carrier of Lord Vishnu, is not a vegetarian. <coughs> He eats big snakes. Vasuki, being a big, a great snake, would be natural food for Garur, the chief of birds. <coughs> Lord Vishnu therefore asked Garur to leave so that Vasuki could be brought to churn the ocean with Mandara mountain which was to be used as a churning road <coughs> these are the wonderful arrangements of the supreme personality of godhead nothing takes place by accident carrying mandara mountain on the back of a bird and putting it in its right position might be difficult for anyone whether demigod or demon but for the supreme personality of god that everything is possible as shown by this past time 
the Lord had no difficulty lifting the mountain with one hand. And Garur, his carrier, carried all the demons and demigods together by the grace of the Supreme Lord. The Lord is known as Yogeshwar, the master of all mystic power, because of his omnipotence. If he likes, he can make anything lighter than cotton or heavier than the universe. Those who do not believe in the activities of the Lord cannot explain how things happen. Using words like accident, they take shelter of ideas that are unbelievable. Nothing is accidental. Everything is done by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the Lord himself confirms in Bhagavad Gita. Maya dyakshena prakriti suyate sa chara charam. Whatever actions and reactions occur within the cosmic manifestation all take place under the superintendence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, because the demons do not understand the potency of the Lord, when wonderful things are done, the demons think that they are accidental. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purpose of the 8th canto 6th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Demigods and Demons Declare a Truth. <coughs> Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Salakaya Chakshodan Militam Yanam Dasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Sapadantikam Bandiyam Sri Guru Si Yuta Padakamalan Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Ganchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshari Vrishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpatrubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Adaita Gadadhara Shiva Jari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Avaropya girim skandhat suparna patatam vara Yayao jalanta utsrijya harina sa visajitaha Death after Garur, the chief of birds, unloaded Mandara mountain from his shoulder and brought it near the water. Then he was asked by the Lord to leave that place and he left. So here, in the Shema Bhagavatam, the wonderful activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and His devotees are related. Here, in this eighth canto and this chapter specifically, so Sugriva Goswami is relating to Parikshit Maharaj about the incident of the demigods and the demons declaring a truce uh, in order to 
get nectar. So as explained in the Bhagavatam and, and the Acharyas have explained in the purports, in the Tikka and the commentaries, <coughs> then in this material world, so of course the purpose of the Lord is to come to try to deliver the fallen conditioned souls so they may go to the spiritual realm and engage in the service of the Lord either in the highest realm Golok or in the unlimited Vaikuntha planets where different expansions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Swami Bhagavan Sri Krishna are situated <coughs> so the spiritual world is ever existing and the different personalities of Godhead are performing the pastimes with the eternal associates. But by the will of the Lord, <coughs> by his own sweet will, sometimes his material world is manifested. And that time, <coughs> some living entities, they come to this material world, uh, conditioned living entities. It is explained by the Acharyas that there are two kinds of living entities, Nitya Siddha, Nitya Badha, Yanadi Bhada. So, those who are eternally liberated, the Nitya Siddha Parika, the eternal associates of the Lord. And then those who are conditioned since time immemorial, but they are also eternal servants of Krishna by nature, but they are in conditioned state. <coughs> they are not serving the Lord. So, when this material world is manifested and these living entities, so they, from, they come to this material world. And the Supreme Lord and Himself is coming, like Krishna Himself, once a day of Lord Brahma is coming and is trying to attract the conditioned souls so they may surrender to Him. Or after Him, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming, the most merciful incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> who is non different from Radha and Krishna. But other times, in every yuga, practically there is one incarnation coming. Although the Lord is known as Tri Yuga, uh, because mostly in the Kali Yuga there is no prominent personality of Godhead uh, appearing. Uh, of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in Kali Yuga with Swami Bhagavan, but he appeared in the beginning of Kali Yuga. Sandhya, uh, Yuga Sandhya, just like we have to chant the Gayatri, those who are Brahman initiated three times a day. Yasyastri Sandhyam. So Sandhya is the time in the morning, uh, just before or after sunrise. One danda, that is 24 minutes before sunrise and one danda after, 24 minutes after. That is called as a Sandhya, and which time we should chant the Gayatri, morning and evening. And when the sun is the highest point between the sunrise and sunset, so that should be chanted. So similarly, if the different yugas are there, <coughs> Satya Yuga, Treta, Dwapar, and Kali Yuga. So it is changing from the Dwapar Yuga to the Kali Yuga. Mm. So it is deteriorating. So that time is known as Sandhya. <coughs> So Mahaprabhu appeared during the Sandhya in the beginning of Kali Yuga, although it is um, four and a half thousand, almost five thousand years ago <coughs> that it started. And also Kalki Avatar will appear, but that is at the end of the Kali Yuga. So that is also known as Sandhya. Mm. So therefore it is known as Tri Yuga. Uh, so, so the different Vishnu Murtis are appearing. And here we see that one Vishnu Murti, Supreme Personality of Godhead, <coughs> appeared ultimately to help, as explained by Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita, Paritranaya Sadhunam Vinashayam Chaduskritam Dharma Samsapanatraya Sambhavam Yuge Yuge. I descend in every yuga in order to protect the devotees, Paritranaya Sadhunam or to deliver the devotees um, and to annihilate the demons, to kill the demons who are against the devotees, who are against the Supreme Lord. 
and to establish dharma, the religious principles by which the conditioned souls uh, can make advancement in their spiritual life and understand their spiritual existence being completely apart from gross and subtle body. Mm. So, in <coughs> the material world, so many varieties of jivas are there, in embodied jivas. Uh, so, not only human beings, but in animal species and so on. But among the human species, it is mentioned, the human bodies, there are 400,000, charlak. And some of them are devoted, some of them are demoniac. And some of them may be not devoted to the, to towards the Supreme Lord, and they're also not demoniac. So they are uh, neutral. Uh, they are just living in this world, and mostly without, or just engaged in sense gratification. So the Supreme Lord is trying to deliver the conditioned souls. Uh, and help the devotees who are already practicing and also the associates of him who are coming to assist him in his pastimes uh, or who are sent here to this world as the acharyas, as the spiritual masters uh, to, to help the fallen conditioned souls. Uh. So here in this instance the Supreme Lord came and uh, first of all, he had instructed the demigods headed by Indra what is now going to, to, to happen and what he should do. Uh, and so according to that, then the, so the demigods, they were ready. So as explained, the Supreme Lord is always trying to help his devotees who are surrendered to him or trying to be surrendered to him. Mm. <clears throat> so first of all, the... Uh, the demons and the demigods, they try to carry this big mountain, Mandara mountain, which is uh, uh, in the center of the Mbu Mandal of the earthly sphere, uh, which is a huge hill uh, made out of gold, which is heavier than stone. So they had a great difficulty in, in trying to carry that. Uh, and they got hurt, and some of them, be, they, they crashed uh, under the uh, the heavy mountain. So then they were baffled and not understanding what to do. <clears throat> and then the Supreme Lord appeared on the scene. So actually the Supreme Lord is always trying to help the devotees. And, but the devotees have to endeavor. And of course, when Krishna is doing something, he's always uh, fulfilling not only one purpose, but usually many purposes. So sometimes even the devotees become proud and they think, oh, I can do so much. Uh, so sometimes therefore Krishna himself has to uh, curb their pride or smash the pride of the devotees also. Uh, and uh, so here the demigods, uh, so they, uh, they were baffled and the demons, of course, they're always baffled. Uh, and uh, so the demons, but they were still trying by own strength to do something, but they were not successful. But the devotees or the demigods, when they are in difficulty, immediately they call out to the Supreme Lord for help. And then the Lord will come and help them. So he came and, as explained here, very easily, with one hand, he picked up this huge hill and put it on the back of his carrier, Garur, with a huge eagle. So, and then, uh, and then himself, he sat on the, on, the, on the eagle and all the demons and the my gods, they were also seated. And so then this huge eagle was flying towards the ocean. And, uh, <coughs> and then, uh, so the hill was put down and then all the demigods and demons, they also, uh, at the shore of the ocean, they came down. Uh, and then the Supreme Lord has explained here, so Visarjitaha, so he discharged, he asked him to leave the place. Uh, so because 
as planned. So the demigods and, and the demons were supposed to churn this big hill in the ocean in order to get nectar. Amrit. Amrit means something very uh, with nectar, very tasty, very wonderful drink. But Amrit means also that which makes you immortal, Amar. So, <clears throat> practically almost immortal. Like the demigods, they're drinking Amrit and they can live for, for so many years. But still at one point they have to uh, live this, this uh, heavenly planets also. And usually they will come back to this planet. Uh, so they were uh, also calling this uh, serpent Vasuki, a great serpent, and in order to use that serpent as a, as a rope to turn this Mandara mountain. And Garur, so it's a big eagle, so the eagles, as we know, they eat uh, uh, snakes and small birds sometimes, and even, that has been also seen even in this world, Big eagles sometimes they will, uh, they will attack the sheep or even some, uh, some uh, other small animals. Uh, and sometimes even, sometimes they may carry away a small child uh, that has been seen also in this world. And then they may eat them also. Uh, <clears throat> so, as explained here by Prabhupada, Garur is not a vegetarian. Although he's a devotee, he's a great devotee, but because he's in that body, I just, it is the nature that he has to eat this, uh, uh, this uh, lower, the animals, other animals, smaller animals, uh, especially snakes and, and mice and, but uh, so, and, but still is accepted as a devotee uh, of the Lord. Mm. <coughs> So, but it is explained in the scriptures, of course, and, and that uh, the human beings, what they should eat. Uh, so they should take uh, fruits, vegetables, grains, uh, milk, uh, nuts, dry fruits. So these are the foods for the human beings, which of course first have, they have to offer to the Supreme Lord and then accept the prasad, uh, the mercy of the Lord. And in this way, they can uh, be spiritually enlivened and enlightened. And, uh, and materially speaking, physically speaking, they will get energy by eating Krishna Prasadam. Mm. Uh, so Prabhupada is explaining here in this purport also about the materialistic persons, the demons. They cannot understand these pastimes of the lords and they will say, how this is possible that... Uh, uh, the, the God is in such a form, form formed and is lifting a great mountain, there's a big bird there, this is all mythology. These are just some concocted stories. That cannot be possible. Uh, so that is actually their foolishness. But then they were saying, and they're giving some theories how this material world has come into being. They will say the Big Bang Theory. At the beginning there was nothing. And there was a big bang. And from this big bang, everything came into being. Very beautiful. Everything became very beautiful. So that is, that is foolishness, actually. And we can see if there's a war between two countries or the uh, world war was there. And the Americans, they drummed two atom bombs in Japan. And what happened when they dropped the bombs? There was destruction. Everything was destroyed. And we have never seen in this world that if there is an explosion, something wonderful comes out of it. Always there is destruction. Uh, so that is the foolishness of, of the demoniac per persons. That means actually the mode of passion and ignorance. Therefore they have these foolish theories. But the devotees and those in the mode of goodness they will understand that yes, the Supreme Lord is there and he has created this world which is perfect in itself. You can see every day the sunrise is there and every day sunset is there without fail. Uh, and, uh, and of course now it is the sunrise is a little later in the winter 
always one minute. It becomes later, till 21st December. Actually, not only one day, a few days. It will be the shortest day and the longest night. And then again afterwards, the days are becoming longer and the nights shorter and uh, the 21st June, for a few days, the longest days are there and the shortest night. So perfect it is going on. And the four seasons are there in the West and in India there are six seasons. Winter season, spring season, then summer season and in India then there's a rainy season which is not there in the West and then there's a Sharad Ritu the uh, pre-autumn, or we may, here we call it the second summer because mostly it gets hot again. And then autumn is there and then again the winter. So the seasons are coming and going every year without fail. So the perfect arrangement is there. And if we analyze, for example, analyze even the human body or even any insect, how it is so wonderful. And who made that wonderful human body and the, even the insect? One time Srila Prabhupada was here before the temple was built. And he was staying in one bridge bus's house. His name was Bhagatji. So just here now Mataji stays there, Manukanya Mataji. He, she bought that place. And uh, so he was staying there. And at uh, one time, I also stayed there by good fortune for uh, maybe one year. I stayed in that place where Prabhupada stayed. And then, uh, so, <coughs> he was sitting on the uh, asan and he had a uh, table before him and he was doing his, his work. So that was before the temple was established. They were just starting. So he was staying there and he was supervising. His rooms were not ready. <coughs> and then he was... Uh, just sitting there, he was not doing anything. He was looking in front of himself. So Bhagaji, his name, this devotee, Brijvasi, was, uh, of course, Brijvasi means they are devotees of Krishna. Of course, first class, second class, and third class devotees are there. Even amongst the Brijvasis, the first class, second class, third class Brijvasis. But we respect all of them. We respect all the Vaishnavas. But we take shelter with the Uttam Vaishnav, the first class devotee. So he was um, a good devotee. And so he was thinking, Prabhupada must be absorbed in thinking of Krishna now. Let me ask him, what is he thinking about now? So he humbly approached Prabhupada. Prabhupada, can you please let me know what you're thinking about right now? What the pastimes of Krishna you must be thinking about? And then Prabhupada was saying, and pointing to one fly there, look at this fly. And he looked at the fly. He's flying around and coming here and there. And, and he was saying, this fly, it is so small, but it has a purpose. And it is a so wonderful creature of the Lord. So we should appreciate this whole material world also, and the variety there, and how perfect it is. So many different bodies are there. <coughs> so he is appreciating creation of the Lord, Prabhupada, the fly, which was created, of course, ultimately by Lord Brahma, the secondary creator, under the inspiration of the Supreme Creator, the Supreme Lord. Everything is coming from Krishna. Uh, so the spiritual world is the material world. But, uh, but Krishna himself is... Delegating, he's perfect in delegating. He has so many demigods there. The chief of them, Lord Brahma. Uh, and and uh, so, he's not himself creating, but by his will, this material world is created. Just like a rich person. Uh, so he wants to make a big house, a new factory. He doesn't go around himself, running around and, and trying to buy the bricks and everything. But he has his man. His, uh, his, uh, his assistants. And then first of all, he, will he has the idea. He has a desire. And that is the beginning. And then he tells his assistant or his secretary or his CEO, chief executive of officer, that I want the, this big building, I want the factory. So you make some plan. He's giving some guidance. 
And then they make the plan, and then he looks at the plan, he's approving. And then, so his man, they're doing all the work. And he's not doing anything. But he's supplying the, the money, and by his will it is happening. So same with the Supreme Lord, just by his desire the material world will manifest. But then he has the demigods. First of, co- first of all, the Purushavatars are there. Karnada Daksha Vishnu, Garba Daksha Vishnu, Kshira Daksha Vishnu. Uh, and then Lord Brahma is creating uh, the planetary systems. And then all the living being, the different living beings, aquatics, then the plants, the human beings. So under his supervision, it is then created. Uh, so similarly, uh, uh, so the rich person, they will do like that. Uh, <coughs> so the pure devotee will always uh, see, of course, Premanjana Chirida Bhakti Vilochanena Santa Sadeva Hiri Yeshu Vilokayanti. He's always seeing Krishna, especially now Sampradaya. Seeing Krishna, Yashoda Nandan, Gopinath, and performing his wonderful pastimes with his eternal associates in Golok Brindavan, where the pastimes are eternally going on. Oh, you may remember the pastimes in this world, Prakat Lila, of Krishna or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Whereas the other Acharyas, like in the Ramanuja Sampradaya, Sri Sampradaya, they will worship Sitaram or Lakshmi Narayan. So the great devotees are fully absorbed in that. And then they're coming here to, <coughs> to help the conditioned souls uh, to become free from this material existence. Uh, so the Supreme Lord himself is coming to help the conditioned souls or he sends his representatives. Uh, and then by their mercy, then we are able to advance in spiritual life. So the point was that the devotees, they will appreciate the Supreme Lord and his wonderful pastimes in the spiritual world and in this material world, both of them. And how in this material world, uh, everything is going on so wonderfully and how he's performing his wonderful pastimes. And we know Krishna is known as Giridari, Govardhan, Govardhan Adharam Vande, Gopala Gop. Uh, Goparupinam, Gokulutsavnam Ishanam, Govindam, Gopiapriyam. So Govardhana Dharam Vande, we have obeisances to Krishna, who is lifting Govardhan Hill, not with one hand, but only with the little finger of his left hand. And we know usually we do the things with the right hand, so the right hand is stronger than the left hand because we are doing things with the right hand that we know. And then we have the different fingers, and of course the smaller finger, the smallest finger is the weakest. So with the left hand, the weaker hand, of course with Krishna it doesn't matter. He can do anything with the left or right hand. He doesn't have to practice doing things with the right and left. He's always uh, Sarvagya, all-knowing, and he has all opponents. Aishwarya, Sar Aishwarya Purna is the strongest. He can do so many things with the left hand. So with the little thing of the left hand, he picked up this big, big hill, Giriraj. Giriraj Maharaj Ki. So here it is explained about this, uh, this, uh, this huge mountain. Uh, so, but actually the, the, the most um, glorified mountain that is Giriraj. Uh, so, because Giriraj is not just a mountain, but a transcendental personality who is engaged in the service of the Lord. In the spiritual world, everything is, is transcendental, such an ananda sarup. The trees, if needed, they can walk here and there, and they can talk. If there's a need, the, the mountains also, they may move. Of course, even in material world, this is so amazing, there are sometimes some mountains which are flying. That is explained in the Bhagavatam. So there are huge, huge birds in this material world. And they, ca- they are carrying not just the sheep or a small dog, but they, can, they are carrying big elephants, big eagles. So the, 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 the spiritual world 
is adabut, is wonderful, and is amazing, and also even the material world. Uh, so the devotees, they can appreciate, and they have faith, and they can understand that these are actually facts which are mentioned here in Bhagavatam. So first of all, one must have shraddha, faith. And that is possible if one is actually situated in the mode of goodness. If one is uh, of uh, saintly <coughs> consciousness, if one has saintly consciousness, if one is humble, tolerant, respectful, uh, and controlling, trying to control the mind and senses, trying to help others. So such a person in mode of goodness, he can appreciate the Supreme Lord and the pastimes of the Supreme Lord uh, in the spiritual world and in this material world also. But those in the mode of good, uh, passion and ignorance, they cannot understand. And they have their foolish theories. <coughs> so of course for us, so we are here hearing the Bhagavatam and we should always try to learn. So here we can learn that we always have to depend on Krishna and remain very humble and understand that we are completely insignificant and uh, so therefore we have to depend on the Supreme Lord but it doesn't mean we're not doing anything but we should be very active but in a humble state of mind knowing <clears throat> that it is by the mercy of the Lord I can do something I can be successful and that is the consciousness of the devotee when things are working out nicely he will think that is the mercy of the Lord if things are not working out nicely, then he will think that is my misfortune. It is due to my being incompetent. It is due to my uh, foolishness, due to my not being careful. Uh, so that is the proper consciousness, always being humble, positive, respectful. Um, so understanding our insignificant nature and the greatness of the Supreme Lord. Uh, and that the, so the Supreme Lord is extremely merciful. Uh, therefore we are able, especially by the mercy of Mahaprabhu, who has come to deliver the most fallen. But in the Pavana Hetu Tavavatar. And in Kali Yuga everyone is fallen. Kaula Shudra Sambhava, that is mentioned in the scriptures. Uh, all over the world, even now in India, people they actually they are not following the samskars, most probably purificatory rites. So therefore, by birth, everyone is just like Shudra. No qualification to engage in spiritual activities. But with the help of the saintly devotees, uh, and then by engaging in devotional activities, under the guidance of the advanced devotees, and especially by chanting the holy names, the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. <clears throat> then anyone can come to the platform of devotional service and become purified in existence, in consciousness, and then is able to uh, make advancement in spiritual life and to worship the deities, perform yagyas, and study the scriptures. Uh, and in this way, then also one is able to help others. So that is another important point that we should not just think about ourselves. We try ourselves and it is said also first you have to take care of ourselves. Uh, and we have to try to be firmly situated, properly situated in the spiritual life. But then we should also try to help others uh, to come to this spiritual life. We should try to help others to make advancement in spiritual life. Uh, so. That is a Vaishnava actually, that is a Brahmana. A Vaishnava is supposed to be automatically a Brahmana. Brahmana is studying the scriptures, he's teaching others, he's worshipping the deities, he's teaching others how to do that. And he's getting something for his seva and then he's trying to help others, he's giving to others. So, so that is a Vaishnava. Uh, he's keeping Krishna in the center. And he's trying his best to serve Krishna, but then he will try to help others also. Uh, and always in Nishkapat Bhav, uh, that uh, not hypocritical. So we should try to be straightforward, simple-hearted, Vaishnav. So he's, uh, he's simple. 
and um, is positive, seeing the good in others. Uh, so that is important. Uh, and not to be too critical. Of course, as a father, spiritual master, if you are in a position, in the temple, the president, so he has to use his intelligence and he has to see what is right and wrong. But that should be done with love and affection also. If correction has to be done with love and affection, uh, always with the mood to try to, to correct and, uh, and then help the other person. Uh, so we have to <coughs> take lessons from these uh, descriptions of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, of course we have to try to see according to time, place and circumstances. And for example, here they're worshipping Vishnu. So we all respect Vishnu, but in our Sampradaya we're worshipping Krishna. Uh, and then even sometimes the instructions which are there, are the rules and regulations, so they are according to time, place and circumstances. So we have to use our intelligence uh, under the guidance of the spiritual master, the advanced devotees. And then so we have to try to live peaceful in this world uh, by following the rules and regulations which are mentioned in the scriptures, Vaidhi Bhakti. But then we should try to come to the platform also of Rag, Rag Marg, when we spontaneously serve Krishna from the heart with loving sentiments. So, but always we have to follow the rules and regulations. But then ultimately we have to come above the rules and regulations and try to serve the Lord with, uh, with Priti, Priti Purvak with some love and affection, with bhakti, with prem, with bhav, uh, we have to serve the Lord under the direction of the advanced devotees. So that is known as Raghunuga Bhakti and so following the advanced devotees who have, um, so who are realized. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana, the ripened fruit of the Vedic tree of this transcendental knowledge. Uh, so this is actually relished, Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's relished by the Rasik and Bhavuk Bhaktas. Nigama Kalpa Taro Galitam Palam Sukamagadam Rita Deva Samadam Bibada Bhagatam Rasamalayam Muhura or Rasigabu Vibhavakaha. Those who are fully absorbed in transcendental spiritual activities and in our line, especially in serving Krishna and uh, remembering Krishna's wonderful pastime in Braj. So, and then they will come to the platform of after sadhana bhakti, bhav bhakti, where the transcendental emotions are coming from the heart. And then they have the loving exchange with Krishna. And Rasik Vaishnava, those devotees who are fully realized, who have realized their transcendental Satchin Ananda Sarup and their relationship with Krishna. So we should hear the Bhagavatam in the association of the bhavuk of Rasik Vaishnava who are advanced. Then it will be easier to advance in our spirit life. So that is also mentioned that Sadhu Sangha, we have to be in the Sadhu Sangha, the devotees especially who are more advanced. Then we can advance more rapidly. But then always the import, most important activity is chanting the holy names, the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. But when we don't have yet Nam Ruchi, or if we don't chant Shuddha Nam, pure name, then we have to hear every day. We have to serve the deities every day. Uh, in the association of the advanced devotees, then we may be able to chant Shuddha Nam. But it will take some time. And once you chant Shuddha Nam, then everything else is secondary. But when we don't chant Shuddha Nam, if we don't have Nam Ruchi, then we have to every day attentively hear the Bhagavatam. We have to read about Krishna, about Mahaprabhu. We have to see the deities, we have to serve the deities. So while chanting, we may sometimes remember Krishna or Mahaprabhu and their pastimes. But those who are advanced, they chant Hare Krishna and immediately Krishna becomes manifest. They don't even have to think. But Krishna will manifest and dance on the tongue of the devotee or in the heart of the devotee. And then the pastimes will manifest. That is known as Purti. So, but when we are not yet so advanced, then we have to hear every day the Bhagavatam and worship the deities in the association of the advanced devotees. Hare Krishna, any questions?
Yes, probably behind is a question. While he is accepting the service of Garur, who is a non vegetarian. Yes. Yeah, that is a yeah, good question. And uh, so <coughs> we have to understand that um, the Supreme Lord is most merciful and his pastimes are unlimited and there's so much of right in his pastimes. Uh, so as we know, Krishna is there with his, with his associates and all of his associates, they are pure vegetarians. And for example, then we have uh, uh, Ramchandra Bhagavan and all these devotees are also vegetarian. Now sometimes we can see, of course Krishna when he's there with even the Pandavas, so sometimes the Kshatriyas, they have to fight. Uh, of course, the Pandavas, they were vegetarian, but sometimes it is seen that some of the Kshatriyas, they may go for hunting, and then they may take some of the flesh of the animals. And even if you see Ayurveda, Ayurveda is a scripture, which is ultimately coming from the Supreme Lord through Vyasadev, or his... Uh, or the different great saintly persons, even there, the remedies are there. If you're sick, what to take and what not to take, some medicine. Even there, sometimes it is mentioned, if you have this sickness, you take this medicine, and you may eat some chicken or something like that. So that is for those who are not able to immediately give up eating meat. So even, for example, uh, it is mentioned that uh, in the scriptures, that if you have to eat meat, you should offer to Durga Devi. And then you say the mantra also, Mamsa, now I'm eating you and you will eat me. So that one will think twice. Okay, now I'm eating the flesh of this animal and in the future this animal will eat me. So that is, I mean, we don't want to be eaten by anyone. So, uh, so this way we can see that in the scriptures, because not everyone is able to immediately come to a certain level, of becoming a pure Vaishnav, so then uh, uh, some injunctions are de there, so they, they may take some meat, but first they have to offer to the Lord. And, but at least then they will abide by the scriptures. Uh, so similarly also we have now uh, some of the Vaishnavas, so as here Garuda, so he's an exalted personality, and uh, so sometimes, and, but the, you see the exalted personalities, they are, uh, they are completely transcendental. And uh, all the activities are actually transcendental. And so therefore we have to be careful and not criticize a great personality in what they are doing. Like Lord Indra is a great demigod, but sometimes he does some mistake. Sometimes he tries to disturb the sadhus because he is afraid that they want to take his post. And he had some issues also with some, uh, some ladies. Uh, wives of sages also and therefore many times he gets in trouble because of that but still because he's such a great personality Indra Dev uh, he's excused and the Supreme Lord is closing his eyes and the other demigods are closing their eyes and they're just tolerating him sometimes so and then we have now Garur so he's a great devotee of the Lord but he's in the body of a bird and uh, so it is natural for this eagle to eat. He, he cannot survive on just grass, but he has to eat meat. It is just his food. So, but somehow the Supreme Lord, he chose uh, uh, the, uh, as a devotee, of course, uh, we may see that the eternal form may be there of Garur, but even in this material world, so he is in this form, and then... Uh, but he's an approved servant of the Lord, who is always ready to serve the Lord, and he's serving the Lord many, many times. But because in this body, so he's forced 
to, to take uh, some non-vegetarian food, what to do. But that is just because of his body. And, uh, and it may be difficult for him just to take Krishna Prasad. So therefore nobody is saying anything. And, but of course we should know also that he's not only, but he's taking Krishna Prasad also. And uh, so sometimes we may not completely understand the pastimes of the Lord and why this is happening, but we simply have to accept the pastimes as they are and even if we cannot understand. But whatever the Supreme Lord does, that is complete and perfect. Uh, and uh, so in this way we may see also those who have been habituated in eating meat, so they may come to devotional service and then slowly they may give it up and slowly they may then become vegetarian also and uh, but guru is a special personality and and uh, so he's in this form of an eagle so therefore uh, it is acceptable that he will sometimes eat uh, some non-vegetarian things and but he's still accepted as a devotee because of his seva because he's serving the lord uh, constantly and uh, so, and as we see, for example, the Supreme Lord is coming in a form of sometimes, as we know, as a, as a fish, which is considered to be a lower creature, and is a coming as a hog. And as we know, the hog is also a lower creature. And, uh, and then he's performing his pastime and in, in, in delivering the conditioned souls by appearing in this way, which is also almost inconceivable and unbelievable how he can come in this form. And uh, so, it may not be that, uh, although he's such an Andasarup is there, of much avatar, and so some attractiveness is there, because it is such an Andasarup. Beautiful, most beautiful fish, or uh, Varaha, most beautiful hog. Uh, so, and therefore they will also offer prayers to them. Uh, but um, at the same time, so we may have some reservation. We don't want to uh, have a, a permanent relationship with, with a Varaha in the form of a hog. And usually these pastimes incarnations are there when this material world is there. <coughs> Whereas we have our relationship, eternal relationship with Krishna, most beautiful form of the Vishnu expansions of Krishna or Ramachandra Bhagavan who are in this form which is uh, Naravat just like human being as we have of course their form is eternal and according to their form so their forms are there in this material world uh, so sometimes the, the activities of the Lord and uh, they are not easily understood why he has to come in the form of a fish so that is actually to attract those who are not so evolved in consciousness. And many purposes may be there, which we may not know always. And so therefore, for some reason, he, uh, he is accepting one guru, one bird, big eagle, as his devotee and carrier, which we may see from one point of view, it is wonderful. Uh, an eagle is becoming a devotee. Like even sometimes you may see a dog and then they are with the devotees and then they be also practically they, they do seva in some way and they help the devotees sometimes and but they are still uh, sometimes they may still sometimes eat the mouse what to do so even you may train up the eagles previously they had the eagles they were catching the eagles and even the pigeons and they were training them to give messages previously when there was no phone no mobile no internet, no computers. And uh, so they may be also then engaged even in, in, uh, in Krishna's pastimes. There are some of them, they are trained, some of the birds, the pigeons, the parrots to give messages. So somehow Vishnu wanted to have a, a, an eagle, a big eagle was there and he, and he became a devotee by his sweet will. And, but still he has the habit of eating non-veg non -veg items, what to do. But he is a devotee, and he's a great devotee. So we should try to reconcile in this way, 
Uh, so we have to be meditating and trying to see, maybe the Acharyas have explained something. If we have not read anything, not heard anything, we just have to accept it, even if you don't understand. But if we meditate, we may, we may get, gain some knowledge about this. Is that all right? Okay, anything else? Hare Krishna. Yes. Uh, in the spiritual world, there are also birds, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't read anything about the birds eating other, other uh, living entities there. But in the spiritual world, so everyone is serving the Lord and everyone is taking Krishna Prasad. And of course there, they, uh, uh, even one time Prabhupada was saying, and now one devotee was asking him, a boy, that Prabhupada, in the spiritual world, everything is transcendental. So what about the Raskula? Is also transcendental? <laughs> yes. So everything is transcendental. And then the devotees are eating Raskula? What is happening then with the Raskula? And then Prabhupada said, you go there and then you will see. <laughs> so sometimes we cannot understand with our unlimited consciousness how things are happening there but all the living entities all the perfect servants of the lord whatever form they are they are uh, serving the supreme lord and they're helping the pastimes of the lord and they are eating something but how exactly it is happening we can not always uh, understand but it is not specifically mentioned that they are eating other uh, transcendental animals there that is not mentioned and it doesn't seem to be like that. But they are nourished by serving Krishna. And they will just take a little prasad. There is not need to eat much. You will just honor a little prasad like the gopis, how much they are eating. A little bit of the remnants. Even the cows, they are eating the grass. Uh, like that. Or the, so they are just taking a little bit. The main thing is there is always a seva. Therefore, even in this world, the main thing should be seva. We take Krishna prasad. But not too much, a little bit, just to keep body and soul together. All right? Yes. Microphone? Yes. Yeah, you can put the mic a little closer. Keep it like this. Yes. So, I will just mention that Yes. 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 Yes that in the spiritual world they can change the form also sometimes if there's a need the such an ananda surup is there and sometimes they may change the form if there is a need so it is inconceivable at the spiritual realm so somebody may be a crow and then he can change the form so even by mystic power sometimes the yogis they were able like to change the form or like the demons like they were, uh, they had also mystic power and then they became a big horse demon, Keshi. But then, of course, so they could change the form also. So similarly, these great personalities, they may also change the form. That is a good point, uh, which may be there, yeah. So, by which they can take Krishna Prasad and then they become a bird again or whatever. That we don't know exactly how everything is transpiring there. It is inconceivable, but of course we try to know more and more and we try to read all these transcendental literatures so we can get more knowledge, more understanding so that things are becoming more clear. But Krishna and Krishna's pastimes are unlimited. And to fully understand Krishna and fully understand Krishna's pastimes is not possible. 
Not possible. But we try our best to know as much as we can. As much as is needed to serve Krishna. But Krishna is beyond our understanding. But we try to know him as good as possible. But even more important than that, to try to know so many things, is to love Krishna and to serve Krishna with love. That is most important. Yes. Yes. So then uh, it looks like, and there is also the famous story of the Brahmana and the cobbler at the. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you see, we, we one, one can even become conditioned by the mode of goodness that is mentioned in the scriptures. Somebody mode of goodness, so he has more opportunity to advance, but sometimes they become conditioned, they become proud. I'm a Brahmana, I'm better than the others. So then, in one sense, then he may become disqualified to make further more advancement in this way. So therefore also those even who are well situated in the material life, they may not come to Krishna consciousness because they think of everything. Everything is going on nicely. What these people are saying, I don't need that. Whereas others, they may be not well situated and they may be struggling, even more of ignorance, but then they're suffering and then they may, by good fortune, um, then they may become attracted to Krishna consciousness and then take up Krishna consciousness. So it is not black and white that those in the mood of goodness only they can understand. No. So different circumstances may be there, but ultimately it is always the mercy of the Lord that one can come to Krishna consciousness and then one can advance. But if one is in the mood of goodness, it is easier to come to Krishna consciousness. It is easier to advance if we are in the mood of goodness. But even if you are not, you may still come to Krishna consciousness, still you may advance and ultimately you may be elevated to a higher state of consciousness by the mercy of the Lord because the process is working. Even, I mean, most of the devotees from the West, they were in a mode of ignorance and passion. Of course, even there, the four varnas may be there but not uh, recognized. Intelligent class of people are there. The, those who are administrating, those who are doing business and simple workers are there everywhere. Uh, so those who are intelligent, it may be easier for them to come to Krishna consciousness, but not always. Sometimes they become proud and conditioned by that. So we cannot always say that uh, who can come to Krishna consciousness. Therefore we have to try to give Krishna consciousness to everyone. Even if one is a pauper in the street and is, you know, seeming to be in the mode of ignorance. But you may give him prasad and that will just, somehow it may just um, attract him and then he may pick up Krishna consciousness and then he may become purified and give up the mode of ignorance and passion, slowly but surely. But it takes time. Even we know as a devotee, many times devotees get angry, they get lusty, greedy, which is a mode of ignorance and passion. So therefore we have always tried to be in the mode of goodness and try to be situated properly and controlling the mind and senses and seeing what the activities in mode of goodness, what are the foodstuffs in the mode of goodness. So we have to use in our intelligence as devotees also and be regulated, try to be in the mode of goodness so we can advance more and more. Okay, it is 9.20, we should stop here. Garantara Chimara Bhagavatam ki. Shila Prabhupada ki.